Hello and thank you for joining us today. This is Stories from Africa from Singi Africa Television. I'm your host Choma Phillips. Happy Africa Day. May 25th, 1963, the Organization of African Unity was founded, later to be renamed the African Union. And 25th of May was selected as the day to celebrate Africa Liberation Day, um, as most countries in Africa were coming to their state of independence and there was still a fight going on for those ones that were still under oppression for many years to come. But eventually that changed and um, the governments thought that it would be better to now celebrate the successes of the continent over the years since independence. And that's how it came to be. In a nutshell, yes, we know Africa still faces many challenges from many quarters, but if we shine a lens on what is good and what is beneficial, it can help lift up our hopes and our spirits. So that's what we'd like to do. Maybe you can tell us what you think are the good things that have happened since independence in your country. What do you think is beneficial and positive in the area of education, for instance, or in politics? or in um, what we say business, um, science and technology, sports. There are things that when we look closely, we're able to see and celebrate so that we can from there focus on building up better things for the future. Sometimes it can be a little bit exhausting just thinking about all the things that are going wrong in Africa um, and for Africans across the global stage, but if we turn our focus onto the beautiful things, maybe we can also be encouraged to make more beauty come forth. Here's a little bit of what I mean, and let's talk after this video. I chose the PFL out of everyone in order to change the game of MMA. For whoever feel ready, I'm the baddest mother on the planet. I'll be fighting in the pay-per-view super fight division. It has always been my goal to control my own destiny. When somebody feels respect, you get the best out of the person. The reason why I signed with the PFL is because of their willing to develop the sport. Most importantly in Africa, I stand for my people, for my community, I fight for them. And to get something like this to bring back home is like a huge accomplishment. Along with the PFL, now that I'm in the position to speak, to fight for those who doesn't have a voice because at the end of the day, it's fighter first. Fighter is the one doing the sport. At the end of every accomplishment, there's another challenge. That's how you build your own legacy. So you can imagine my excitement when my husband told me what had happened with, um, with Francis Ngannou. I was nearly weeping for joy. The excitement, I mean, this man endured so much humiliation while at the UFC and then went through one year where people were now starting to question him, oh, why did you come out of your contract? You should have stayed there. You should have taken the money. You know, the UFC was offering him a ton of money but not willing to give in to the requests that he had made for better treatment for fighters overall, not just himself. And um, he just hung in there. He just patiently, patiently hung in there. I guess that's kind of like his style of fighting. Just hang in there, patiently watching, patiently negotiating, patiently finding the right place for himself and now you know congratulations to pfl they've gotten for themselves someone who actually is a real gem and such a benefit and for for Ngannou to now be the chairman of pfl africa with the heart that he has you can imagine the beautiful things that are going to come out of that arrangement because this is a guy who sat and thought not just about his future because yes there is a future after you know fighting the mma and you know getting beat up and all that and you know just taking money for fights the clock runs out you stop fighting because you know even age and plus your body will be telling you things and then what 
So he now has an and then what? And his and then what now includes the entire continent of Africa because now he can decide North, East, West and South Africa can all have their different leagues and he'll, you know, he'll create them and then he can do a Pan-African one and all of that. And not just that, but now the training and then the involvement of youth in activities that are actually positive and beneficial and will transform their thinking and help them see that if it can happen for Nganu, it can happen for them. You know what I'm saying? And so we celebrate you, Mr. Nganu, because what you did and what you put up with is, a, it really is a testament to the nature and the character that you demonstrate, which we believe is what Africans should be aspiring towards. So congratulations on your new contract. Congratulations on your new positions and titles within the PFL. We pray that the PFL is going to be honorable towards you and towards all the people who you help bring on board because if they start to now play games now that's another story but we believe that it will be well so you remain faithful and steadfast and you know just commit and we will back you and we know that good things are going to come out of what it is that you have sown seeds of pain and tears towards so all the best Nganu all the best we celebrate you and we celebrate other Africans who are also thinking beyond themselves. You know, like, we want to celebrate what we would consider to be African heroes. But the African heroes um, that I will share with you, you may never have heard of. Some you may have heard of, and you may have heard of in negative terms, and you'll wonder why I'm talking about them. But oftentimes, we want to celebrate people who are already in the news, you know, the people who are on stage already, the people who are in the glitz and the glam, and the shiny cars and everything. Um, and while, you know, many of those can be positive role models, some of them are not, but this is not to cast a shade on any of their achievements. It's to point out the fact that there's a man or a woman somewhere living quietly who's actually doing amazing things to change the world around them. And that that is what it is going to take for Africa to be able to grow beyond her current state. And so, for instance, if I tell you that um, from Nigeria, um, there's a gentleman called Father Anselm Adodo, who um, runs an organization called Pax Herbals, which is a herbal medicine um, production facility. He's a botanist, he has studied plants, he understands them, indigenous plants, and he has created high quality medical remedies for people to be able to use, medical treatments for people to be able to use um, in the form of capsules, if you will, or tonics or whatever. But what has happened is that they go through rigorous preparations in order for them to be actually suitable for use. So it's not one of those, I give you something in some strange container and then now you go and you use it. It's precise, clean, well-packaged herbal medicine from Africa. And so we celebrate you, Father Adodo, because it has taken years for you to do what you do. You also have a lifestyle center where you provide nutritious food for people and a place where people can rest and detox from the environment around you. And you know what it took? It took his time and his dedication, and he's been doing this for a very long time. And this is the kind of heart that is required. When you think about heroes, if you think about nations that are heroic, we can talk about the nation of Ethiopia. The people of Ethiopia have always had a remarkable courage and have stood out for just the different way in which they also experienced the invasion of the Europeans into Africa. And what happened recently is they were facing a lot of pressure for building the GERD, the, the, the dam that they were going to use to generate hydroelectricity for their nation. And people from the West were laying pressure on them and doing all sorts of things, all sorts of dirty tricks in their country to try and get them to stop building the dam, not to turn on the dam, not to do this, not to do that, meaning that the country was not even being viewed as sovereign or respected in that way because there was so much external interference and pressure for a project that they wanted to do that is going to turn around the economy and not just theirs because they're going to resell the electricity that generates, but going to turn around their, their economy and enable them to scale up and ramp up manufacturing and all sorts of other things. And so, you know, kudos to the people and the leadership of Ethiopia who just stood their ground and they said, no, we are going to use our resources to build our nation. 
and they went, and he went ahead and completed the dam, went ahead and turned it on, and now they're moving on with life because they have a plan and a focus and they have a great spinal cord, meaning they stand for something and they stick to it. So we celebrate you, Ethiopia, for what you do and what you represent to the continent of Africa. You represent a certain amount of courage, a standard of dignity, and a standard of firmness and robustness that we need as a people in entirety. Posthumously, we travel to Tanzania and we celebrate the late John Pombe Magufuli, who looked at his country and he decided that this country can actually make a difference internally without interference or without rather the involvement of the IMF or the World Bank or so and so. And so he made up his mind that he was going to grow and develop his country. We know what happened to him. We know why. And we mourn him for that. But we celebrate him because he had the guts to stand up in the 2020s and say that it is possible to do what Sankara was doing. And he was going to do it. And he began to do it. And he won the love and the hearts of the people of Tanzania and others around him. Even if some people were giving him grudging respect. Respect it was that he got. And we celebrate that completely. I want to introduce you to a lady called Sylvia Miloyo Kuria, who many outside of Kenya do not know and many within Kenya do not know. Sylvia is a mom. Um, she was a social worker and she and her husband moved to an area where farming was possible and she started a kitchen garden growing organic food only because she wanted to give her children the best. When she saw the benefits of providing nutritious, clean food to her children, she said to herself, well, I can't keep this to myself. I have to let other people in on this. So she scaled up her farming and began to sell her produce. And then she realized, well, I can't feed everybody. And so she started to look for other farmers around the country and train them in how to produce clean, nutritious food that is safe for the farmer and safe for the consumer and to sell it at a price that will benefit the farmer, not in the way that farmers in Kenya have been exploited. She wants to ensure that they earn a good living from the work that they do while they provide food that is safe and nutritious for Kenyans at large. I mean, this has taken time and pain and great sacrifice. If you follow her on Facebook or you follow Sylvia's Basket, you will be able to see the love and the intentionality in what she does and you know special mention to one of her team members who's also family called carol moko who stands by her like strongly abandoned her own aspirations and career in order to make sure that this business is going to stand strong so to sylvia and carol and the family of sylvia's basket we celebrate you for what you're doing this is awesome what you do is needed we know it's not always easy but Please don't stop because you will encourage others also to stand when they need to stand in the face of adversity. So thank you for your love and your dedication to what you're doing. And now we go and we, we go to South Africa and we look at the life of Vusi Tembekwai who said to himself, my paraphrase, that there is a way that somebody can live that is good. He set a standard for how his life should look. And then he said, I can help train people so that they can come up in the way that view, they view themselves, in the way that they view the world around them, in the way that they deliver services to people, in the way that they carry themselves. You know, for so long, for too long, Africa has been told that they're the worst of the worst and, um, you know, backwards and, uh, what is it, vile and dirty and sick and diseased and, uh, you know, the whole African timing thing and, you know, how just useless overall we're supposed to perceive ourselves to be and people have believed it. But Vusi was like, there is a way somebody can live and that is how I am going to do it. And when he trains, he trains from a place of excellence. He has faced a lot of backlash. He has been called all sorts of things. His family has come under personal attacks. He has recently made decisions that have taken him off the continent in terms of where he's going to live, which is very unfortunate in such a loss to the continent. But what his life says to everybody is that it is possible 
to be different in an environment that constantly seeks to suck you into mediocrity or to press you down. It is possible to be different and to do it well and to do it at a standard that is beyond excellent. So congratulations, sir. We've never met. Maybe one day, maybe not. But keep doing what you're doing because it is in the doing constantly and the consistency that people understand that these patterns can be formed and maintained and sustained. So all those people who are sitting there waiting for him to fall off the wall will see that he shall not. And he shall not because his faithfulness will see him through to the end. Him and his family. God bless you. Now, there are several things we could talk about. In the DRC, we have a friend who is a brother called RV Galangala, who set up an organization called Zola Bantu. For those in the know, Zola Bantu means love people. And he has established a platform for education, but it's not the education that you're thinking of. It's the retraining of the mind to break off the molds and the conventions that you have come to understand as education and training and learning. Because Africa embraced the European standard and the European model and continues to do so. In fact, in Kenya, they are deciding to now model education for Japan, for Germany, and for I forget which other country, so that the graduates can be able to go and work there. That is a problem. But what Zola Bantu are doing, what Arvi is doing, is bringing in the ability for people to think, to review the world around them to regard things from the perspective that allows them to make decisions that are transformative from the inside out. Once you do that, once you change the inside of a man, the man changes the outside around him. His environment will be impacted directly by how he sees himself. And that is hugely important. And we're so thankful that we even know this guy. So keep going. It is worth it. It is worth it. And we celebrate you. We also want to talk about um, Rutendo Matinyarare from Zimbabwe. Now, Rutendo has stood against a lot, fighting sanctions that were imposed against the nation of Zimbabwe, running a movement, helping people know what they are, helping to push against them so that his country can be freed. And he got results. Those sanctions are like whew, going, going, gone. And then he hasn't stopped there. He does many things. But another thing that he's doing now is currently talking to people about, as if that wasn't enough. He's talking to people about how, his people, about how they can get licenses to mine gold because it is allowed for indigenous Zimbabweans to get licenses to mine gold and generate their own wealth. And this is possible. And let me tell you, if it wasn't bad enough that he was catching flack from his own people about pushing against sanctions, now he's catching flack for telling them you can be rich, which makes no sense whatsoever. Because we as a people need to come to the place where we own our resources, where we are able to amass them to the point where we can do transformative things in our own economies without having to look outward. And this is the answer that he's bringing with this latest push. So Ritendo is like the modern day freedom fighter, if you will. Forgive me, Rutendo, if that's not a term you're comfortable with. It's just, when you think about the amount of stuff that he's trying to clear out of the way, in terms of mindsets, in terms of political issues, in terms of trade issues, and now in terms of generating wealth for his people, this is a man who faces mountains and goes after them. And that is the courage and the gravitas and just the strength of heart and of mind that we need as a people in order to get some stuff out of the way so that the next generation can thrive. You know, even if we don't see the fruit of it in our generation, if we have started the mountain coming down, you know, or rolling the rock down the hill, it will roll even if we expire and others come and take over. At least make it really difficult for the neo-colonialist, imperialist, globalist elite to try and implement their plans, which they're really working hard at doing. So why don't we work just as hard at doing things that are actually going to be beneficial for all our people? You see what I'm saying and where I'm going with this? We also recognize and celebrate a lady called P.D. Lawton um, from South Africa, now living in the UK, who is fighting against 
an oppressive regime that is coming against the DRC, interestingly, as well, even as she does community work in Kivu. And so PD and the Kivu community family, you all know yourselves, we celebrate you and what you're doing. Please do not stop. It is worth it. The sacrifice and the pain is worth it. Um, if you're interested in finding out more, you can talk to us and we'll let you know the things that you might need to know so that they can also get the support they need in order to do what they need to do. And then we also remember the young people of Nigeria who stood up against the SARS unit in the police in Nigeria and said that they wanted to put an end to injustice. When we watched them and saw the courage and the love and the brotherhood, it wasn't about who is rich or rich man's son or daughter or who is poor. It wasn't about who is Muslim or who is Christian. It wasn't about, you know, whatever. It was about we are young, we are oppressed by these people and we have to do something about it together. And they stood together as one. There was a unity and a harmony for this cause that Africa needs as a continent. We need a togetherness that identifies a cause that is going to be beneficial to all of us and that we push towards with all strength so that we achieve it together the way that they did. It's tragic how they were dealt with by the government, but that seed of greatness that they sowed, that one can never be ignored. Just like what happened in Algeria as well, where not only the citizens, but the military as well stood together to uproot oppression from their nation. There are things going on in Africa that would make your heart sing. It's just amazing. And we know that there are Africans who are living in Europe and in the US, in the USA and in Asia and so on and so forth, who are doing amazing things where they are and who are studying things that are needful for the continent. And we celebrate you in your corners where you are, where you're doing transformative things that will bring Africa up to the level and the standard and the place that she needs to get to. Because guys, we are 60 years old. It is time for us to stop begging for money to build toilets and dig boreholes, water, poo poo, or build houses, just the basics, we should be able to take care of our people. Looking at each other, looking at ourselves, north, east, west, and south, every single nation is unique. Every single nation has unique resources that the other nation needs. If we get over our mindsets and stop trying to bring each other down, we can do amazing things. When you think about like what Hilda Bassi did when she um, won the Guinness World Record for the longest um, amount of time spent cooking just recently, and you know, we celebrate you too. Then um, Togo now said, ah, we want to take her down. Why? Why not? then now go and make the largest chocolate bar because Togo has begun producing chocolate in case you didn't know. So produce the largest, tastiest chocolate bar the world has ever seen so that people can know actually they have started producing their own chocolate from their own cocoa resources. Isn't that like better? Why not strengthen each other in the places where we are weak? you know, and celebrate each other in the places where we are strong. So we work as a family, an African family, an African unit, so that going forward into the next 60 years, we build with a purpose, with focus, with commitment, excellence, selflessness, focus on the ability to do regardless of potential hazards that lie ahead. Because the unity that we display as a people and the love that we display as a people for each other is enough to take us to the places that we need to get to. We can do it. Cars are being manufactured on the continent, not just assembled, but manufactured. So are phones. These things <laughs> are so basic, you know, basic things, basic engineering, basic, simple things. We should just be doing them as we build the greater. So we don't get stuck in, oh, that nation is awesome, that nation is powerful, that Please, Africa is awesome. Africa is powerful. Africa is great. Africa's people are amazing. I mean, look at yourself, you know? 
the heart and the love to just get up every day. Let me tell you, this continent has taught us resilience, if nothing else. So if we have resilience as a people, we can keep pushing and we can go on. If Peter Obi can stand up and say, I'm going to make a difference, I will offer myself, I'll walk away from this established party and I'm going to stand. And people can look and see, hey, this guy is serious. We're going to support him even if he doesn't know us and has never come to introduce us or line our pockets. It's possible. It's possible. If said your man can say for, yeah, so my phone is cracked. What? I have more important things to do than worry about a cracked phone. I am building for my people back home. Francis Ganu can take the shame and the humiliation that was heaped upon him by the world and stand strong until he's made chairman of PFL Africa plus other things that he's doing. Just go and check out his contract. You'll smile. Guys, hmm? sanctions against Zimbabwe dropping. It is possible. It looks impossible and it feels impossible because the narrative that you hear every day is so negative and it's like you're low, you're down, you're useless, you're weak, you're too weak, you're too poor, you're too broke. But that's just a lie. If Museveni said to himself, this is my oil and I'm going to refine it. Dangote has finished his refinery. So what is it, 20 billion that it cost him to put it up? Well, he finished a refinery. So now there's a refinery in Nigeria, top of the range. Guys. All it takes is a decision to do. Do in your heart. Then do in your home. Then do in your neighborhood. Then do in your wider community. Do in your office. Then do in your country. And if you're not interested in so much community involvement, at least do in your heart. Because the change that will take place in you will be seen and will transform others whether you know it or not. So, this Africa Day, let's make a decision that we are going to do things differently going forward because we are worth it and we deserve it. So forget the travails and the trials and the pains and the tribulations, all of those came just to make us stronger. Now that we are stronger, let's build. And let's build the Africa that we want to see every day. Not petty bickering and embracing the division that the Europeans and the West and whatever the fascists have brought. Too bad for them if they want to be negative and evil. Let's be filled with love and life because that is our place and our purpose and our role as a continent and as a people. Please, we want to ask you for some help. If you could tell us and tell each other in the comments below, who is your hero? Who do you see around you or out in public who inspires you and who you want to celebrate? Which Africans will you celebrate? And what are the reasons why you would do that? Even if it's yourself, you can tell us about yourself, no problem. But let's just have a conversation about it this Africa day. Let's build some love among us and let's understand that yeah, the person who seems to be succeeding is not perfect, but at least they're going somewhere. And that means a way has been opened, not just in the sector that they're in, but in others. Because once a precedent is set, it means that if someone was doing great in training and you're like, wow, the way has been paved, then you can now do that in sports or you can do it in fashion because a way has been opened. If people ask you, who do you think you are? You tell them, no, don't you know so-and-so story in this place in training? This is what they did. And I have decided that I am going to do similar or greater in my own area and my own space because I exist to transform this sector. If you don't like it, I understand it as well, but I will still persist. You guys, man, there are no limits to the possibilities that lie before us except what is in our own hearts and minds. So again, happy Africa Day. Thank you so much for taking time to watch this video. Um, do like, share, subscribe, um, whichever platform you're watching on, I'm not sure. But if there's a bell to ring for notifications, kindly do that so that when we, get, when we, when we post new videos, you can get them and watch them quickly while they're fresh. And thanks again for being here. The things that we have imagined Africa can be, and I mean the beautiful things, they are possible as long as we 
keep that hope and that dream and that love and that inspiration and aspiration alive. We appreciate you. All the best. <laughs> Let's talk soon.